If you have a trading idea and you want to see if it works, then the quickest and simplest way to find out is to backtest it. In this video, I'll show you how to do that using an EMA crossover as an example. We'll build the strategy from scratch, run the backtest and see how it performed. I'm going to do the backtest in trading view using PineScript. To bring that up, head down to the button at the bottom left that says Pine Editor, and this will bring up your scripting window. This is where I'm going to write all of the code for the strategy. But first, I need to create a new strategy. So I'll click on Manage Scripts, Create New, and Strategy. This automatically pre-populates with some values, but let's delete all of that and start completely from scratch. When creating a new indicator or strategy in PineScript, I first have to define the version that I'm working in. Right now, the latest version of PineScript is version 6. So I'll type out version is equal to 6. The code and syntax will change over time between versions. So this is an important way of quickly being able to tell what this script is going to be relevant to. After that, I create my strategy and I'll define that by typing strategy and then giving it a name. In this case, it's just going to be called EMA crossover. Once that's done, I'm going to save the script and I'll use that same name as a script name so I can come back and find it later. If you get an error like this, it doesn't matter for now because we haven't written the rest of the code yet. So I'm gonna add this to my chart. And now if I drag this out of the way, I can see up here, I have my EMA crossover appearing. I can't actually see anything yet. And there's a little exclamation mark that shows that there's a problem with it, but we'll continue working on the code and that should fix these things. This strategy is going to be an EMA crossover. That means I need to calculate my two EMAs, which are the exponential moving averages. I'll create a fast EMA first. And this is really quick and easy to do because Pine script already has indicators inside of it. I just call the TA for technical analysis and then I call EMA. Inside here, I pass a couple of arguments. The first one is the price that I want the EMA to be set on, which is the close price, and then the period for the EMA, which is going to be nine. Then I can copy this down and just change it to my slow EMA, which is going to have a period of 21. And although I have created these EMAs, they're not actually visible on my chart yet. So let's draw them on the chart by plotting them out. For this, I call the plot function and I pass in each of the EMAs. So first it's the fast EMA and I need to give it a color. So the color I'm going to set as as, let's say yellow, so color.yellow. There's a few colors that are already built into trading view, which means I can just call them by their names. I'll give it a title, which is going to be fast EMA. And then I'll set a line width just so it's really visible. So the line width is going to be three. And then I can copy this down and just change the name to turn it into my slow EMA. I'll change the color to aqua just so that it pops a little bit against the background and then change this to slow EMA. If I now click update on chart, first of all, the error has disappeared because now we've called the function that's needed for a strategy. And then if I go up here, I can actually see my two EMAs, but I don't actually want the EMAs in a separate window to the price chart. This is normal for indicators like MACD or RSI, but with moving averages, it's much easier to see what's going on if they're actually on the price candles. And there's an easy way to fix that. So I go back into where I define my strategy and I add an additional parameter, which is overlay is equal to true. If I now save that and update on my chart, you notice that nothing is initially changed. My indicator is still in a separate window. However, now if I was to delete it from here, go back into my editor and I add my strategy strategy back to the chart, it now comes up with the EMAs overlaid on my price. And that's all because I added this overlay condition. So now I have my indicators, but there's no trades being taken. If I go into my strategy tester, there's nothing here because there's not been any long or short signals. I need to define some entry conditions based on these two EMAs. So down at the bottom, I will add a long condition and I will call technical analysis with TA and I will use the crossover function. The crossover that I'm looking for is when the fast EMA goes up above the slow EMA. When that happens, this long condition returns true. And to see an actual example of that on the price chart, the fast EMA is the yellow one here. So on this big green candle, the yellow EMA crossed above the blue EMA that gave the entry signal on the next candle. And then the strategy holds that trade all the way until we get a crossover to the other side down here. And that's where the exit condition comes in. So I have my entry condition, which is this long condition. Now we need to create an exit condition. So I say exit underscore condition, and this is just going to be the opposite. It's now a cross under where the fast EMA crosses under the slow EMA. Now I have my conditions and I can now use them to actually trigger entries. So down here, I can say, if I have a long condition, then my strategy will place an entry. I give the entry a name, so I'll just call it long, but it doesn't really matter. This is just the ID of that trade. And then the trade direction is going to be defined by strategy.long. 
long because that's the direction in which this trade is going. If I now update this on chart and head over to my list of trades, you can see that it's actually triggered a trade. It opened on February 2023. That would have been the first entry, but because there is no exit condition, it's just held all the way up until today. And it's showing that the position is still open. There's the entry price, there's the current price and the floating profit and loss. So now let's actually close out these positions. And I do that by adding another if statement, which says if exit condition, then the strategy will close my position. And the position name is long. So this ID here has to be the same one that I put in here. Now let's retest this by running update on chart. And this time I have a lot more trades. I can go over to my overview and that shows me my performance graph over time, the total PL, the drawdown, the number of trades and the number of profitable trades, as well as the profit factor. So there's loads of different metrics that I can get from this. But what's also really handy is that I can actually see all those positions on the chart. So the one I spoke about earlier as the example, where the yellow line crossed above the blue line, we get this long entry here. And then and trade is held up until we cross back over and it exits over here. If I go back to the strategy tester and have a look at the trades, you'll notice that every time this triggered, it only took one position. I'm testing this on Bitcoin and the value of that has increased significantly over time. So if I scroll back to some of the earlier trades, they were priced a lot lower, but it was still only taken one unit each time. The result of that is that the performance metrics and the total profit and loss isn't very accurate. And it basically scales with the price of Bitcoin. To fix that and to make sure that the strategy actually uses all of its balance instead of just buying one unit, I can add some additional parameters to the strategy definition. The first one is initial capital. So I'll set my initial capital to 10,000, but I guess it doesn't matter. This is just for backtesting. And then I need to define what quantity it should be using. This is done with another argument, which is default quantity type. And I will set this to strategy dot percent of equity. There's a few different options like unit, which is what it's set to right now. And it just buys one unit of Bitcoin. But if I set it to percent of equity, then I can say I want to use 10% of my balance or up to 100% of my balance, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to set the default quantity value to 100%. If I rerun this now by updating on the chart, the actual actual entry and exit signals are exactly the same. But now you notice the total PL is much higher as a percentage value. And if I head over to the list of trades and we look at position size, you notice how that's different now. The position size is now scaled properly based on the account balance as well as the price of Bitcoin at that time. And this will give me much more accurate numbers. But perhaps one of the most powerful things of all this testing is that I can easily try out different parameters. So I've chosen 9 and 21 for my fast and slow EMA, but I could test a whole bunch of different combinations instead. Right now, I would have to do that by manually typing them in here, but there is a better way. I will instead take inputs from the user, which in this case is me. I'm going to add another little section up here and I will say my fast underscore length is equal to input, which brings up the little dialog box where I can type in values and then the type of value I need. So it could be a Boolean, a float, but in this case, I need an integer. So it's just going to be a fixed number. Right now, let's just keep it all the same and set it to nine. Give it a name, which is fast EM a length and then I just copy this down and do the same thing again for my slow length which will be set to 21 and change this to slow EMA length but now what I can do is use these variables in place of these hard-coded numbers so here goes fast length and here goes slow length update this on my chart and initially nothing will change however if I hover over EMA crossover I have this little settings button here, this nut. If I click on this, it will bring up the EMA crossover strategy. And these are the two inputs that I just created. So now I can tweak these. I can set this to eight and it will immediately update. Set this to 50 so that you can see more obviously. Click away and now you see the blue line has changed. Not only does it automatically re-update the indicators, it actually reruns the back test as well. So let me go back into the settings and change these numbers back. So if I go back to 21 and then I click away, the equity curve has changed. So it rerun the back test immediately. And the same works with different time frames and different instruments. Whatever I change this to will automatically rerun the back test, making it really quick and easy to see where this works and where it doesn't work. There's a lot more that can be done, like adding stop losses, take profit targets, adding more indicators and more parameters. And I can do a more detailed tutorial where I go into all of those additional features. Let me know if that's something you want to see by hitting like on this video. That way I'll know if that's something you guys are interested in. In the meantime, play around with this code and see what you can come up with. Thanks for watching.